Welcome to rebuilding a Bernac Vulcan model steam toy part 3. I found that this small copper boiler contained a lot of lime scale. In this video I show how I removed it all plus cleaning the outside of the boiler. I've never seen as much lime scale come out of a small boiler before. I was actually quite shocked to see this quantity. After wiping away the residue from my bench it was clear that something needed to be done. The boiler is not going to be very efficient with such a coating of lime scale on the inside. Plus, lime scale in solution can be quite abrasive, which isn't good for the moving parts of the engine. You will notice in this clip, as it sits in the plastic tub, I have started to clean up the outside of the boiler too. Many model steam engines have some sort of a coating over the brass, or in this case, the copper and the brass. It's like a very thin coat of lacquer and this will need to be removed before I can polish up the boiler barrel. But first, a health and safety warning. I am about to use Kilrock K Kettle Descaler and it is readily available from various sources. It is dilute formic acid and this dissolves the lime scale that it comes into contact with. I am posting this notice in response to a comment from a viewer who complained about me using dangerous substances without a health and safety warning the last time I descaled a model boiler using a similar method to this. Here is the warning, do not drink this liquid or get any of it on your skin or in your eyes. Always wear eye protection when using corrosive or dangerous chemicals. Maybe you should just read the directions for use on the rear of the bottle. Here's the front of the bottle, it is the original Kilrock Mega K. It's the one that works, for the professional and home. I didn't receive the funnel that was supposed to come with this engine, so I'm using a Mamod type funnel, and I'm putting two funnelfuls of Kilrock K into the boiler. This amount should be more than sufficient to descale the inside of the boiler. To make it work though, I need to add some fairly hot water. And for that, I need to use my kitchen kettle, which is very convenient because the workshop is right next to the kitchen. There is, however, a quick word of caution. Here it is. Do not use boiling water. Only use hot water as the temperature of boiling water is too high. And the sudden expansion of the boiler with the high heat could adversely affect the soft solder which holds the boiler together. How did I know what the temperature of the water was? Well, I actually touched the kettle after it had been on for a few minutes. What's the famous saying? A watched kettle never boils. But as I've just mentioned, I do not want it to boil in this case. Once the water in the kettle was hot enough, I placed the boiler in a polythene tub and poured the water over it. The reaction is immediate and quite severe. The Kilrock K in conjunction with the hot water quickly dissolves all of the lime scale inside the boiler. To cover the boiler entirely, I did need a little bit more water. I heated some more water with the kettle and poured it over the top of the boiler until it was covered entirely. I thought it would be a good idea to put the steam pipe into the mixture as well. Here's a very rare shot of lime scale being dissolved by a mixture of water and Kilrock K in a plastic tub. I left the boiler in this tub for the rest of the day. And as I had some water left in the kettle, I boiled that up properly and made a cup of tea with it. Later on in the day, I removed the boiler from the tub and I was pleased to see that the Kilrock K had also attacked the damaged lacquer coating that was on the outside of the boiler, which made it very easy to remove with some Scotch-Brite. I cleaned up the entire boiler the best I could and as you can see, it's a lot cleaner than it was. I'm going to polish it up on the polishing spindle, but that is in the outer part of my other workshop, the dirty area. That's where I do all the sanding and polishing. And oddly enough, it's the same place where I do most of the painting of small parts, but not at the same time as I'm cleaning and polishing other parts in there. Back in the kitchen, I found this in the cupboard. It's an abrasive cleaner. And as usual, just as with the Kilrock K and other chemicals, I always read the directions on the other side. 
The front of this cabinet was marked because I spilt some cellulose thinners on it, and I thought I would try out this cleaner on the front of the cupboard. This abrasive cleaner is very good. Not only did it remove the marks on the cupboard doors, it cleaned up the parts of the boiler. Here I'm cleaning the chimney. This was heavily coated in some sort of varnish, and because this part over the years has been the hottest part of the engine, the varnish was very well baked on. But by applying some of this astonished cream cleaner with a piece of Scotch Brite, the brass chimney was very easy to clean. For the curved part at the end, this was more difficult, so I used a rotary wire brush just to get into the tight curve. And once again, for the benefit of those viewers who may be thinking about drinking Kilrock K, I would like to put another health and safety warning in. When using rotary wire brushes, always wear eye protection. By using this quite thick rotary wire brush, I got quite a good finish on most of the brass on the chimney. It's all starting to get quite shiny. Here, I'm doing the bottom part of the chimney. I don't think I want the steam engine to be really fully 100% gleaming. I just want it to be clean. And this is more than a good start, much better than I thought it was going to come out. I will take it into the outer part of the workshop and use the polishing spindle to get a better finish on the barrel. More about that in the next episode. For the moment, I want to show you this new machine that I've bought. It is called, and I'm sure you've guessed it, an endoscope. This one has its own monitor, it records video and photographs onto its own internal card, and the best part about it was the price. This was just over £38. And to the gentleman from the USA who was getting confused about pounds, I'm talking about the currency we use in the United Kingdom, which is pounds sterling, not pounds in weight. When you press the on button, a screen appears, then you're ready to go. The image quality on the monitor is better than I thought it was going to be. I'm going to have to do it. For the benefit of some viewers, I must say, here is another health and safety warning. Wait for it. Do not, under any circumstances, insert this endoscope into your body cavities, or for that matter, the body cavities of any of your friends. I'm using it for looking inside this small Burnack boiler. This is a shot of what I see on the monitor screen. When I remove the card and put it into my computer, this is what the inside of a Burnack boiler looks like. I was quite amazed at this. It's a very tiny boiler. It takes still photographs and video. I selected the video mode because then I can freeze frame any interesting bits. Inside the boiler you can see quite a lot of solder and two protrusions sticking out. These are the two bushes that accept the bolts that hold the water gauge cover in place. For just over £38 sterling I am well impressed with this. I bought it via Amazon and it arrived the next day. And there you have it, a very useful workshop accessory and endoscope for looking inside boilers. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.